The Design Commission was set up in 2002 by the Welsh Assembly Government uh, to promote high standards of quality design throughout Wales. So it was that broad and that ambitious, really, huge remit. Uh, similar, of course, to CAVE in England, the Commission for Architecture and the Built Environment. And this, we also have a sister organisation in Scotland, ANDS, Architecture and Design Scotland, and uh, one that's just starting in Northern Ireland. So all four countries of the UK now have at least the beginnings of their own design commission and were often referred to as a design watchdog or as an advisor on design standards. We like to think we are independent, you know, we comment freely on, for instance, on buildings that are commissioned by the Assembly, so it's not as if we're constrained in any way. The interesting thing about the Wales Commission is that it's always taken the remit for sustainable development very much to heart partly because of the uh, Government of Wales Act, you know, which set up the Assembly and had as its remit to promote sustainable development. So we had that legal hook there to be able to, to hang our work, RSD work, onto. And I've been running Design Review for the last three or four years now, four or five years now, and, um, and every scheme that comes in is interrogated on its sustainability credentials as well as design, you know, urban design, context and all that sort of stuff. Okay, great. Let's, um, let's talk about uh, the Lammas project. I mean, what was the, 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 the main message from the design review about the Lammas project? Well, we were, we were very excited to see the Lammas project at Design Review. It's our first community self-build scheme that we've reviewed. Um, and for me, that was a bit of a milestone because I've, you know, been very involved in the self-build movement through CAT uh, and run regular self-build courses. So um, that was great. That was fantastic. And I was really pleased that the rest of the panel shared that enthusiasm too. It wasn't just me. Um, so I think the panel used words like, you know, inspiring, innovative, exciting to describe the project. And we very much wanted to support it and we very much wanted to see it succeed. I think where the panel had some difficulty was, you know, these are professional designers, we are the design commission, and it was the lack of uh, kind of intentional worked out design uh, language in the documents that I think most disturbed the panel disturbed in not in the sense of you know you must have an architect because you know architects are great but uh, disturbed in the sense that we didn't want to see a reason that it might fail not being addressed at the beginning we, the panel really liked the the architect design building that you have the, the community hub and we'd like to see you know, more of that thinking inform the other domestic developments and possibly an element of standardisation we thought would help. Now, we know you're all rugged individualists and, you know, you're build, you're, you know, your buildings are an expression of yourselves and, and that's fantastic because that's where the commitment and the, the stamina comes from. But uh, we just thought that, yeah, an element of standard, standardisation would help in terms of buildability and costs. We have kind of taken your message and we've kind of mm -hmm. set up our own kind of design review system in oh, the right. architects yeah. already. Yeah. We've, we're also kind of, yeah, we've, we've wholly kind of taken on board mm -hmm. your recommendations mm -hmm. and have built into the Lammas proposal systems to, to implement that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, we're, we're yeah. really happy with yeah. that. Yeah. And I think you're right, it's really important that it works. Mm. Yeah. It is really important that it works. I mean, I had a really good uh, afternoon up there with Simon, um, you know, walking around the site. But as he was telling me about his earth sheltered house, and I was saying, oh, you know, how are you going to get a concrete truck up here? And he was saying, no, it's not, it's going to be straw. And, you know, and it's just, there's so many alarm bells ring when you think of straw bale against earth. Yeah, that, that you can see yeah. might lead to, you know, yeah. future failures. It's yeah. not, uh, yeah. yeah. 
So well, I can just, and we just had an interesting conversation yeah. about that, and it was quite interesting because normally I would have been the the way out person saying, you know, everything's got to be straw bale and clay, yeah. but you've also got to look at functionality and yeah. what you're asking the material to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's take it back. Let's start really simple. You know, what? Are, why sustainability? Why do we need to be sustainable? I just can't begin to answer that really. I mean, um, I can answer it in terms of, you know, rising carbon levels and ecosystems and habitats and uh, global warming, but that's such standard currency now. Yes. Um, I suppose my worry is that uh, it's become so accepted and fashionable in a way that it will, you know, will, will, that will peak and, and other concerns will overtake it, such as the economy and, uh, um, you know, sort of right-wing political trends that we're seeing emerging at the moment. And, and climate change and sustainability will kind of become yesterday's issue. I think that's a real worry in the cycle of news and media okay. that we have. But why we need it, I mean, can't begin to answer that. It's just yes, uh, obvious. I, yes, I, I'm aware <laughs> So, okay, coming from that then, what do, what do you feel are the main obstacles mm. to sustainability? Um, I think there's uh, still a lack of understanding about the real issues and the uh, effects of not taking action now. I think people are still in a kind of time bubble um, uh, about... Uh, you know, the fact that they're not going to be too affected in their lifetimes. Uh, there's the whole consumerist element, the want, you know, wanting things to get better. At the moment, things are not getting better, so, but that's just bringing in a lot of other constraints in terms of costs. Uh, you know, we've had very good arguments made at a government level as to the cost of acting now being much less than the cost of acting in the future, but the costs of acting now are still actually greater than not doing anything. So getting that commitment to taking increased action, whether it's at the level of an individual developer or the level of a policy maker, is going to be more difficult in these challenging economic times, I think. So that's, that's certainly a major constraint. So lack of understanding, uh, the culture not quite being entrenched, and costs, I think, are okay. the important ones. And so... I mean, listening to you speak about the, the policies that the Works Assembly is, is putting into place, do you feel that there's a, there's a real political will now to embrace sustainability? I do. I do. We've got a very strong minister. Uh, we've actually got a minister for, for sustainability, which is pretty amazing. That's only just happened for the first time. No, no other UK government has got one. Um, and she's very committed. She really is. I, you know, I've heard her speak and she's very convincing and she has gone for commitments and policies which many of us might have thought oh you know that's too ambitious we're never going to do that but she's doing it uh, she assures us that she won't blink uh, that she will work with anyone who who wants to make these changes but she doesn't she's not really interested in talking to people who tell her it can't be done so She's, she's very strong and determined, so I think the political will is there. Um, it's just getting it translated, which is always the difficult bit. You know, a minister makes a statement and then, or the civil service and people like us, I suppose, have to figure out how you actually translate that and get the buy-in of the industry, because, you know, we can't actually do it without the industry. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that, okay. That's a... That's a a really clear picture. So, yeah, what, is there is there anything more we can do then? You know, what more can we can we do to to to, to create the change that's needed? Well, I mean, just keep on. Really, I think you know, an important thing is to create uh, exemplars, beacons, like La Masaha will be, so that uh, you know, and there are others like cats where people can see what is possible um, and can maybe, at least on an individual level, you know, work out their own response to that in terms of affordability, but still, you know, high performance standards. Um, 
I mean, the self-bill movement and to some extent the social housing movement has always been in the in the vanguard anyway of, of the whole the whole sustainable buildings thing. Uh, so just keep on, really. I mean, that is all we can ever do. But um, I think I think to have exemplars is extremely important. I really hope that Lamas will be one of those. Okay, great. <laughs>